All right, so we can cool here with Mitchell Levin. How you doing, man? I'm good. Thanks for having me on. It's good to be here. Uh, it's a pleasure, man. I'm, I'm glad I'm able to talk to you today. I really love that new single you have out there, uh, Cancel Out the Noise. Thank you. So what was it like uh, releasing this song? I mean, especially I know that you had it out prior. You had it out on an old album, and then you uh, decided to say what the hell, put it back out. Yeah, that's right. So it, it first appeared on the Little Horse Tapes, which is just a a six song um, acoustic EP that was recorded to a, a tape machine. So it's very lo-fi and fuzzy. And, um, and I felt like the song had kind of more potential uh, to be played in like an indie rock format or a pop rock kind of deal so that's what we set out to do and i think we accomplished it in a really good way um the song has uh, taken a journey from its original form to what it is now that's for sure now what is it like when you go ahead and you go back into a track and decide to redo it especially like bringing up old feelings and things like that well it's interesting um I, you know when i play that song today i'm definitely not thinking of the same thing that i was when I wrote it, you know, right. or when I first started playing it. And that's the cool thing about songs is they're, they're malleable and they can be applied to our lives at different times. And, and with different context, um, they can mean different things, you know? Um, so when I'm singing, I don't want to feel the way I don't want to feel the way I don't want to feel the way I do uh, each night that, that may be different, you know, which, which feeling I don't want to feel, uh, you know what I'm saying? Right, um, right. Yeah. So it's, it's a song that I've carried with me for almost four years now and um, still feels relevant um, in my life when I play it. And, and I think that that is a, um, you know, a trademark of, of a, a good song or at least a song that has a, a bit of a of a shelf life you know um as a songwriter i write a lot of songs and it's funny to see which ones get left behind and which ones wind up on records um you know for every album i put out there's like two records worth of songs that didn't make the cut um and I don't really know how, um, you know, that, that process of choosing songs for an album is, is really kind of subconscious. And I just like feel it out and, and go with the flow. Um, try to not be too attached to songs, but um, this is one that has, you know, s stuck with me since the beginning. Now, is it hard putting out music during this uh, pandemic that we're, we're going through? I mean, you don't have the option to tour, you know what I mean? One thing I noticed, like, every year there's a catchy tune that gets played, you know, it gets out of the airplay and all that, but you don't have the possibility to go out and to back that up. And, you know, you might get lost in the wind, so to speak, not being able to right. be out there. Sure. Yeah, I mean, it is difficult um, not having the option to tour to support a new song, but... Um, I do think that people are still consuming a lot of new music and what I've been interested in recently is, you know, there are artists that have had their big break since the pandemic. And right. that's, that's, that's a weird thing to think about, you know, like the, over the past year, there have been some artists that recently like had their moment and, and went from nothing to something. And, for that to happen right now is a, it must be a really surreal experience. Um, you know, it's, a uh, yeah, it's just a hard time. And, you know, especially for, for people who are not fully established and um, haven't already made it to a point where their music is sustainable financially and which is the position that I'm in. Um, you know, this can really put a dent on um, someone's touring career and whether 
or not they make the decision to keep going. You know, this this uh, moment in time, the pandemic may be the catalyst that turns a lot of people around and um, has them getting out of line with their ticket, you know, and saying, I, I can't do this shit anymore, um, especially if I can't tour to support it. But you're still so, going to shows, though, right? I am, yeah. I, I've i refused to take no for an answer, you know. Um, there was, between March and June, I didn't play any shows at all. Um, and that was a, a long break for me. But since then, I've been able to play at least a couple shows a month, which at the very least gets me, you know, thinking about the songs, working on set lists, working towards the next uh, show and it keeps me going. Um, yeah. Now, now, what is it like, man? I mean, like you're in Virginia, right? I mean, I'm in, I'm in New York and you can't do shit here. We even had really we haven't had we haven't had anything. Yeah. What are the shows like for you there? Is it limited capacity, mass, things like that? So, yeah. Um, we we just did our local CD release party last Friday. Um, and it was one week after Cancel Out the Noise came out. And state regulations said that we could only have 40 people there, uh, a capacity of 40 people. And we were close to that. We we're almost at 40, I think. Um right. Uh, and it and it was yeah it went really well man i i was extremely happy with the turnout uh, so what i was saying more, that 40 does that include the band and staff is yeah i think it's home? everyone everyone so we did it in art in an art gallery called black iris so it was kind of a a house show vibe you know we were on the floor no stage just on some rugs in, in a big long room and um, everyone was spread out masks on um, but it was a great way to celebrate the release of the record with our friends and family um, the people that directly supported it you know and uh, supported the kickstarter when that was live and it was also a way for people to sign up for pre-orders for the vinyl which um, I actually just got test pressings today which is very exciting I'm going to have the album on vinyl for the first time. Now, uh, you were actually able to get like CDs and stuff, man. I know a lot of bands are having a hard time securing the plastic and shit. Yeah. Um, I did my pressing through a company called Blue Sprocket here in uh, Harrisonburg, Virginia. They're a beautiful state of the art um, pressing plant and recording studio. And this is, um, yeah, we printed a round of CDs and a round of vinyl. This is my first time ever printing vinyl. That's awesome, man. You know, it's a yeah, it feels good. Yeah, especially get your hands on it. You know, what I mean, absolutely. I do have the CDs. Like I said, we did our CD release last Friday. So, and what's cool is the CDs are just little sleeves. You know, there's no insert. There's no. It doesn't open up. So it's really just like a miniature form of the vinyl because they're like exactly the same, you know, it's just an insert, a little sleeve. So uh, that's cool. I mean, I'm very pleased with how they came out. Well, I'm, I'm glad to see that people are still actually making albums and CDs these days. You know what I mean? A lot of bands just skip it completely and go to digital. I mean, but then again, you got to think about it. I mean, not everybody has a CD player anymore, man. I mean, if I could, let alone a record player. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I think uh, it it's definitely like an investment and it costs some money to to produce these things. This is my first time making CDs or anything in four years. Um, I haven't pr printed anything since the Little Horse Tapes. And with Nostalgia, which was my last record, I didn't print anything. I just did di a digital release, you know, because I didn't have a budget um, to support it. But it's nice to have something on the online store or something for people to buy to show. Uh, and I think, I think that vinyl has proven that it will never become obsolete just because for like, tr you know, certain music fans that are passionate about listening, the listening experience, the tangible experience of holding a record and opening it and reading the credits and stuff. Um, 
you know, that it's always going to be important. So that's obviously like a, a small percentage of the population, but that small percentage makes a big impact, I think, on an artist's career. Um, and it's, it's interesting to see how different genres of music um, are more popular in different mediums. Like people still make cassettes in like the hardcore scene and in a lot of indie rock scenes and like shoegaze and, and DIY bands love cassette tapes for some reason. Um, and I think like a lot of Americana and country artists, their fans are probably buying vinyl and you know, some people still really do like CDs if they have a CD player in their car. I have a CD player in my car. I don't have one on my computer. So I have no way to like download music from a CD. Um, but obviously most people are consuming music through streaming platforms. That's how I, I, I listen to the radio. I listen to vinyl. I have some cassettes. I, have, I listen to CDs sometimes. I do it all. But most of my listening, just like everyone else's, is uh is on spotify yeah yeah i mean it's you know unfortunately it's, it's the way uh of the future and i think it's okay in in some capacity you know as long as as long as artists can make a living and um and as long as they're supported but with performing being the primary you know it's like we've shifted they used to say that um you know, you, you tour to support your record. Now you make a record to support your tour. And um, that's a major shift in the industry, you know. Uh, artists used to be able to make a, a really successful record and just stay at home and uh, collect royalties. You know, what a luxury that would be. But these days, like, you really have to be a road dog and go out and work your ass off uh, touring, which is really hard work, you know, and it's not for the faint of heart. And um, it's, you, you know, touring is a, it's like a really demanding lifestyle. You know, you have to have your, your wits about you. You have to take care of yourself physically um, and mentally and emotionally. And, um, although a lot of people out there on the road are not doing those things, um, you have to, because it's hard work and it disconnects you from reality and from family and friends. And that can be the trickiest part of it all. You know, it's like how to stay sane and how to stay, um, uh, just involved in your work and how to stay healthy, you know, with, a touring all the time or traveling you know being on the road oh yeah i mean especially being an up-and-coming band i mean people don't realize the hard work that gets into that a lot of the shit falls on your shoulders you know what i mean you ain't got a bunch of roadies you ain't got a driver you know what i'm saying you ain't got you're no. you ain't getting catered to you know what i mean i mean it's you wake up you get to the venue that you're supposed to be you, you know you unload your sound check you try and find hopefully a shower catch a meal somewhere and perform yeah man right back on the road you know what i mean yeah and those tours are hard you know van tours are hard and um it's something that my current band hasn't even experienced because we formed you know just before the pandemic and we recently had another lineup change and there's a lot of guys that are in my, are in my position that um you know as solo artists we may make a record that is full band and, and big production, but we have no choice but to go out on the road solo acoustic um, because we just can't afford to pay a band. And I found that that is the case for me currently. And I think moving forward in the spring and the summer, I'll do some small tours if I can get out to places, especially in the South, that are still open and play some outdoor shows. And, um, and I think the format or the arrangement that's going to work best right now and make the most sense financially is just as a duo with myself <clears throat> uh, singing and playing guitar and um, banjo and then Daniel Stein, who plays drums and pedal steel in our band, um, 
coming with me because he can really do it all. He plays electric guitar, pedal steel, keys, auxiliary percussion, sings great harmonies. So he's like a, a Swiss army knife, you know? Well, you could definitely do a tour of Mississippi and Texas right now. Yeah, see, that's weird, man, you know, and Florida. You know, one thing that scares me is it's like all these bands that are on a break and they're, they're putting in all this time and effort <clears throat> becoming something. They had all this time off. There's no uh, there's no big unemployment scheme for uh, for a musician, you know what I mean? So they had to find work of some sort, and it makes me wonder which one of these bands feel that it's more stable doing the job that they've been doing for the past year, who knows, maybe two by the time the road gets back out and open, if they're real comfortable securing that paycheck rather than running out on the road right away. And you know what I mean? We're going to lose a lot of bands. That's a great point, man. And like through this whole thing, I've been very concerned about music venues. You know, I've watched so many clubs that I've played at over the years closed for good since last March. Oh, yeah. I mean, the same thing. And, my area is the same as well. I mean, unfortunately, I've seen a lot yeah, of people burn. So, yeah, nationwide, man. I think we're going to lose thousands of venues. Um, and I haven't really thought about the fact that I think you're right. We're going to lose a ton of bands, too, because people that are and it's really going to be people in my demographic, you know, that are in their 20s are at that fork in their life where it's like am i going to go down this long hard road and try to make a living playing music am i really going to do that to myself or am i going to take the easier road and go get a job that's stable and secure you know and take care of myself and and my family someday um it's a really difficult decision to make and if you have no choice, but, and you have to take two years off, like you said, you know, some people may never be able to make it back. You'd be surprised of how many bands that I spoke to that are, that are name bands. Like, you know, like you think they had something, you know what I mean? That are working nine to fives right now because they don't have shit. You know what I mean? I mean, people yeah. these days, the fans out there, don't want to pay for music is what it comes down to. You know what I mean? They, they feel entitled to get their, their songs for free. You know what I mean? And yeah. all the time off, they're not going ahead and, and, and paying to for a single. They're not reaching out and buying merch for the band. You know, they're not doing anything to support everyone they've loved for all these years. And unfortunately, they're going to slip through the cracks. Yeah, that's really unfortunate. You know, um, I was listening to a podcast a few weeks ago. Um, it was Joe Pug's podcast, The Working Songwriter, and he was interviewing Taylor Goldsmith from the band Dawes. Mm -hmm. And Dawes has been a band for a long time, you know, almost 20 years, I think. And um, he said that it wasn't until the pandemic that he realized that they do have a, a sustainable fan base, you know, that like his, in his entire professional life and career, he has been you know, scared to death that it's all going to collapse and fall apart at one point that like the fans will not take care of them. And, and that it wasn't until they were forced to take a break and not go on the road that he realized that like they have built something that is sturdy, you know, that will continue to produce revenue and that their the record they put out this past year uh, has sold more copies than any other record they've put out, which is crazy. I don't know. I don't know how that happens, you know, but that is the type of fan base that every artist can only dream of and hope for, you know, a fan base that is, is really dedicated to taking care of you and giving back to what you give them. Now you mentioned that you did the, uh, release party there. I I thought the album doesn't come out for uh, two weeks. Can you yeah, that, that, yeah, it doesn't come out till March nineteenth. So that's true. Um, so it was a an exclusive, um, an exclusive opportunity for our friends and family to get their hands on the record before everyone else hears it, which is kind of cool. That's awesome. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. 
Plus, plus it had to feel good though. You know what I mean? For you to actually put the hard work out there and not knowing what the future holds to be able to go ahead and get a venue and do a, do a show and be like, look at this. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, I don't know what we're going to do as far as uh, we're probably just going to quietly celebrate its digital release online um, on the 19th, but we'll probably do a vinyl release show at some point in April. Um, And I think that I now is as good of a time as ever to release it. You know, we've, we put off putting it out for so long. It was supposed to come out almost a year ago. And um, I'm just ready. I'm ready to put it out there. I'm ready to move on. I'm ready to, um, for people to hear it. And I like March. It's a good month. You know, <laughs> the flowers are coming out. Um, it's a hopeful time of year. And I hope that uh, people see this as a hopeful album, you know. Um, it talks about hope a lot on the record. So see, that's gotta be we're, truly frustrating though, man, to have an album out that you said you were ready to put out a year ago and have to sit on it for all that time. I mean, especially being a musician, I'm sure you've written new songs since this time period. Yeah, man, I have two, I have two records worth of songs um, that I'm sitting on, you know, and have been for a, quite a while. And um yeah, I mean, I keep writing. I keep going through waves of of writing. I, I wrote a ton of songs last month, and um, I don't know. Hopefully, I'll get around to recording them and making more records. This has been a really good time for bands that are stable or do have a stable, some sort of stable income or um, ability to stay at home and, and work on their craft. What a blessing, you know, Um this has been a great time to record and put out records. You know, a lot of people have been just like churning out music, which has been great. And, um, and what a gift, you know, to us stuck at home. It's like such, it's such a selfless time to put out music because it can't financially make sense, you know? Um, but it's a gift to everyone who's stuck at home who has nothing better to do. And so like, I'm grateful to the artists who have worked hard to put out music during this time. And I'm happy to be one of those artists now. You know, it's definitely going to be a double edged sword. I mean, you're so excited to write new songs. You've had all this time at home where you got nothing but the opportunity to do so. Yeah. Not knowing when touring is going to start again. I mean, how many albums can you put out before you get to go? on tour you know what i mean i mean there's gonna be bands that have two or three albums that people didn't even know they're gonna play it's true what am i listening to you know what i mean yeah that's very true and um i don't know i don't have the answer to that um i i hope it ends soon man you know um i really need to get out there and play because you know i gotta get out there and play yeah dude it's, it's i don't know man i mean this is something that I do for a livelihood is, is go to the shows and interview the bands in person and take photos, and, you know, do reviews and all that shit to be sitting here for, a, what I think it's a year now, right? We're almost on, on the year mark. Yeah. And yeah. being told that like, you know, maybe spring, summer, you know what I mean? I mean, I, I see shit getting booked in my area, but I know for a fact it's not going to happen. You know what I mean? I mean, there's big shows announced that are at outdoor uh amphitheaters in my area that there's no fucking way that this concert's going to go on it's just unfortunately some of these bands don't want to give up that ticket revenue you know what i mean they're they're holding out of that shit from last summer that got canceled it's just like i don't know i know man yeah it's crazy it's a weird time yeah for sure man you know what i, I see that you're trying to do the best that you can i see uh you got a twitch channel is that right um, yeah, well, actually, I don't have a Twitch channel, but I work with um, Cody Massaw from TLP Films. That's the Liquor Portal Films. Um, we live together and produce uh, a lot of content together, and he uploads my weekly live stream to Twitch, which I'm doing tonight, actually. It's every Thursday night. So That's cool. Uh, yeah, check it out. 
for sure. You know, it's like a, it's the new medium. You know, I mean, a lot of bands are going over to Twitch. I mean, there's money to be made there if you can. I don't know. They changed the fucking rules where you got to uh, have a certain amount of hours and different followers and shit before you can start actually doing some of the cool things that Twitch allows you to do. You know. Yeah. But whatever. Interesting. I haven't really delved into it. Um, I know it's a rabbit hole. I'm gonna have to go down eventually, but you know, maybe I can bypass it. I never did the Snapchat thing, so you know. Oh, there's a lot. I never did. I never did TikTok either. Yeah, well, you know, avoid it while you can. <laughs> <laughs> so people want to follow up. They want to know more about you. They want to pre-order this album CD. Uh, what, yes. What do they do? Um, please go over to www.mitchellevanmusic.com for everything Mitchell Evan. That's Mitchell with one L, Evan no S. Mitchell Evan Music. You can follow me on Instagram and Facebook at Mitchell Evan Music. Also on uh, Venmo and PayPal at Mitchell Evan Music. If you want to support directly, I will be launching a Patreon this spring. If you're into that sort of thing, um, Patreon is a way for fans to directly support artists that they love. And um, I, you know, I'm a full time working artist. Uh, this is what I do. And um, I hope that you enjoy the record. I've worked really hard on it and I'm really proud of it. And I, I can't wait for you to hear it. Now I'm we just got, we just got the pre save link today. So um Keep an eye out for that on the socials and uh, you'll be able to pre-save the record on, on whatever streaming platform you listen on. Now, uh, people pre-order, they get anything? Do you know you sign it or anything like that for them? Yeah, absolutely. If you pre-order a vinyl and I ship it out to you, I will sign it. Absolutely. Cool. You know, that's the one thing I've noticed that like people are signing their CDs or their books or whatever. I mean, before you'd have to pay the extra, you know, 50, 60, 100 out, depending on who it was. You know what I mean? Now it's fucking part of the deal unfortunately to get the, the shit in people's hands out there yeah man um that's a great way to support me and and if you're into vinyl or you have a way to play it on cd you know please buy the record directly you can also buy it through Bandcamp for download um which i really appreciate as well um there's a lot of unofficial music on my Bandcamp page which which is mitchellevin.bandcamp.com I've got a ton of releases uh, that I just kind of put up there that don't make it to Spotify and all that stuff. So my band camp page is for the true fans um, that want to see everything else that I'm doing. Now you have any uh, shows lined up that people can uh, check out if they're out your way? Yeah. If you are my way, um, April 22nd, I will be at, hold on. I, I don't want to give wrong information um april 23rd i will be at brambley wine park in richmond virginia full band um and the night before i'll be if, april 22nd i'll be at another round bar and grill solo acoustic in richmond as well and that's about it on the books right now um uh, we're working with a booking agent to secure some tours for this spring and summer in the southeast and um hopefully beyond we'll see where it takes us no you don't feel the need to put uh, rva in your name what do you mean like in my uh my handle yeah i'm just fucking with you man there's a lot of bands from uh richmond that have to put the rva after the yeah they, they like to represent don't they yeah for sure yeah we're ta we're proud of our town i think you know it's just one of those things right cool man well i appreciate your time like i said i love the music and uh i can't wait to see what comes next from you thanks man i really appreciate you playing it and um sharing it with your fan base it means the world it's been right. a pleasure talking to you, you take care of yourself man you too brother